Good evening to all my viewers. Once again, Jakut Power Government is back to continue with his lectures on the political history of Ghana, which was started last two weeks. And since we started, we have been looking at the Crown Colony system, which is just a form of political administration or a form of administrative system that the British adopted to administer all their colonies. And we have been able to look at the background and the meaning of the Crown Colony system, as well as consider the main features of the Crown Colony system. Today, we are coming to look at the role, one of the important figures under this political administration played to ensure the effective administration of the British colonies. And this personality is the Secretary of State. But for those of us who are viewing this video for the first time, I want to tell you that the Akut Power Government is designed to support SHS history and government students who would be writing their final examination with West African Examination Council to pass their history and government papers with exceptional grace. However, beyond this, we also have the intention of equipping the Ghanaian public with the political history of Ghana, because history, we say, is the memory of society. And for that matter, if we lose if we don't know our history, we are going to lose our memory as human beings who make up the society. Taking inspiration from Cicero, one-time orator, governor, and for, sorry, one-time orator, statesman, and lawyer in Rome, who observed that to be ignorant of what occurred before you were born is to remain always a child. This should tell you that when we forget our past or we don't take interest in knowing our past, we will forever remain children. This tells you and me that we must take our history very serious. That is the more reason why the Ghanaian public should follow my lecture on the political history of Ghana. On this note, we start with today's lecture, and today's lecture is focused on the functions of the Secretary of State. That is, we are coming to look at the role the Secretary of State played to ensure the effective administration of the British colonies. Once again, functions of the Secretary of State under the Crown colony system. The Secretary of State, I told you last week, that he was a member of the British Parliament and at the same time a member of the British cabinet. cabinet. But today we are interested in his position as a member of the British cabinet. So as a minister of state in charge of all the British colonies, the secretary of state played certain functions that were very crucial in the administration of the British colonies and that these are the functions we want to look at today. Function number one, the Secretary of State played a significant role in the appointment of all the colonial governors. The question is, what significant role did he play in the appointment of all the British colonial governors? This is it. The Secretary of State advised the British monarch or queen with respect to the caliber of people he didn't fit to be appointed as colonial government. That is, he advised the British colonial government, and for that matter, the monarch, on the people who were qualified to serve as colonial governors. In view of this, the Secretary of State exercised powers over the colonial governors. That is, he could dismiss them, he could discipline them, he could transfer them from one colony to other, and he could also call them back home. This explains why 
when Frederick Hudson involved himself in what we call in Ghana the Asante Golden Stool episode, he was transferred by the Secretary of State in charge at that time to Barbados. Well, since we are looking at history and Herodotus talks about the fact that he digressed with plan, let me digress with plan to tell you what actually happened. This governor called Frederick Hudson passed a sacrilegious comment against the Asante Kingdom. He told the Asante Kingdom to release the golden stool for him to sit on it. And having said that, the Secretary of State felt that he could be harmed by the Asante Kingdom. Looking at the way they revered their golden stool, which they claim contained the seven clans or the souls of all the clans that make up the Asante. That is why the Secretary of State, who had power to transfer all colonial governors, decided to transfer him from the Gold Coast to Barbados. Also, the Secretary of State performed legislative function. In this case, he was given the power to approve all proposed bills adopted by the legislative councils of all the colonies. For this reason, the Secretary of State could reject or refuse to approve any proposed bill in the colony. This explains the reason why Joseph Chamberlain ordered Governor Matthew of the Gold Coast to withdraw the Lands Bill of 1897 when the people of the Gold Coast, through the Aborigines Rights Protection Society, protested against that bill called the Lands Bill of 1897. Well, as we continue with the lecture and we get to nationalism in British West Africa, you will appreciate what we mean by the Lands Bill of 1897 and the Aborigines Rise Protection Society. But for now, let's continue with the functions of the Secretary of State. The Secretary of State also performed financial functions. That is, he was given the power to approve the fiscal policy or budget prepared by the colonial governor. That is, for any fiscal policy or budget approved by the colonial governor, the Secretary of State would have to approve it, lest the colonial governor could not go ahead to implement such a budget. This is to tell you that Gordon Gaddisberg's 10-year development plan for the Gold Coast was approved by the Secretary of State before he went ahead to implement it to give us railways, harbors, etc., etc. The Secretary of State also approved. The Secretary of State also had the power to approve all public works that the colonial governor wanted to execute. Once again, the Secretary of State was given the power to approve all the public works of the colonial governor. That is to say that before the colonial governor could construct roads, build railways, build harbors, build hospitals, etc., etc., the Secretary of State had to approve this infrastructure that we call the we call public works. Moreover, the Secretary of State advised the colonial governors on how to administer the colonies. That is, any time the colonial governors faced challenges in the course of administering their colonies, they consulted the Secretary of State who advised them and guided them and coached them on what to do to overcome such challenges. The Secretary of State also played the function of receiving any delegation that visited the that visited the UK to pour out their grievances. In a nutshell, the Secretary of State received delegations from the colony. It was the duty of the Secretary of State to listen to the grievances from the colonies or the grievances of the people from the colonies. In view of this, he was tasked or charged or mandated by the British colonial government to receive any delegation from any of the colonies that came to Britain to 
poured their grievances to the British colonial government. This explains the reason why Joseph Chamberlain received the delegation that was sent to him by the Aborigines Rights Protection Society when they came to Britain to prove to the Queen or the British monarch the extent to which the people of the Gold Coast had rejected the lands, the proposed lands bill of 1897. Again, under the leadership of Lord Milner, a Secretary of State at that time in the 1920s, National Congress of British West Africa also sent a delegation to this Secretary of State called Lord Milner. He also received them, however, he did not do what they wanted for them. The Secretary of State was also empowered to set commissions of inquiry. That is to say that the Secretary of State had interest in all issues of public concern in the colonies since he was a minister of state in charge of all the colonies. So because of this, the Secretary of State was given the powers to set commissions of inquiry to investigate or look into any issue of public concern. This explains the reason why the Watson Commission was set under the instruction or advice of the Secretary of State in charge at that time to investigate the causes of the 1948 riots in the Gold Coast. The Secretary of State was also responsible for supervising the activities of all the colonial governors. That is to say that the Secretary of State played the function of supervising all the activities of the colonial governors. The colonial governors were charged to administer the colonies in line with a policy, general framework policy that the British colonial government had designed. So to ensure that the colonial governors administered the colonies in line with this general framework policy of the British colonial government, government, the Secretary of State had to supervise their activities. To also get the British colonial government abreast with the happenings in all the colonies, the Secretary of State received annual reports that were prepared by the colonial governors on the legislative and the executive councils in all the colonies and presented them to the British Parliament through which the British, the British government could know what was happening in the colonies. On this note, I would end the lecture by reminding you that we just looked at the functions of the Secretary of State, without which the British colonial government couldn't have administered the colonies the way they did. While I draw the curtain down on this lecture, I will once again appeal to my viewers to like, comment, promote, so that Jakut Power Government can continue with this lecture on the political history of Ghana. Remember, this particular subtopic is very, very important for SHS history and government students who will finally write WASI, be it private or mainstream. Until then, I wish you the best of luck. Take care and cheers.